You're listening to the Growing the Lamb podcast with Pastor Robin St. Clair. For updates, information, and our Growing the Lamb newsletter, like us on Facebook. Thank you for your support. Well, today we're very excited. Charity Gale is with us here on Growing the Lamb podcast. Yes. And uh, I've been looking forward to having Sister Charity with us for several months. And uh, I know that most of you out there, you have heard her music. And a uh, matter of fact, here the other day... <clears throat> I was telling my dad about you, and he goes to the church. He'll be here tonight. But awesome. he was uh, he was at work, and he works in a, a factory job, manufacturing job. And uh, I was telling him, you, you need to listen to Charity. <laughs> she don't just sing. This girl's anointed. Oh, and so God. he's uh, he's listening. I think he's got an earbud in his ear. And, and all of a sudden, a song comes in, and he says, Charity, I just began to weep. I just began to feel the presence of the Lord. Mm-hmm. And he said, uh, I went over to see who it was, and it was Charity Gale singing. (laughs) And so we're excited about having you today, and thank you for joining us on Growing the Lamb podcast. Uh, Welcome to the podcast. Thank you. I'm so excited to be here. And yes, I'm excited about worshiping with you guys and just getting to that place where we let God do his thing, you know? That's my favorite thing to do favorite which i've had several hours now to visit with charity melissa and i we've we visited with her and her group and and uh you listen to people on the radio on a cd and uh, you feel the presence of the lord but oftentimes you really get to know the person when you meet them Mm -hmm. and find if the quality that you hear is the quality of the person and uh i've just been just been blessed by your spirit charity you have such a wonderful spirit for the lord And uh, now I know, you know, I feel sometimes today, at least, like the woman at the well, she goes and tells everybody of her village and they come and they see and they say, now, it's not just that you told this, but we've seen it for ourselves. (laughs) So, so I say to everybody, Charity Gale is the real deal. She loves the Lord. But Charity, we ask you to come on today and thank you once again for joining us. But uh, just really, there's a lot of people out there that may not know your testimony, and uh, I understand the power of the testimony because there's a lot of people out there that they may say to themselves, well, I can't, or I never will, or God can't use me, or you know all the things, Charity, that may yeah. run through a person's mind. And uh, oftentimes, all you need to hear is the testimony of somebody that God is using in a powerful way. And uh, I'd like for you to take a moment to share with us your testimony. Now, I know that your dad was a pastor and That's whatnot. Right. That, that, that's just an incredible thing. I know he's very proud of you, no doubt. But could you share with us just for a moment, Charity, of uh, how you got saved yes. and come to know the Lord? I would love to. Well, yes, my entire family is ministry. So my grandfather and grandmother, they planted churches all over the United States, landed in Buffalo, New York. It was a choice between Hawaii or Buffalo. Oh, wow. And they chose Buffalo. You know, it's the Lord. When oh, it's, yeah. That's what I was about to say. <laughs> when wow. It, when, it's, when it's between literally the most beautiful <laughs> place and the literal coldest place. Yeah. Uh, but um, they planted the church, and it is a wonderful, beautiful, thriving church of amazing people and my church family. Um, so grew up there, and I was six years old. And from the time I was born until six, I knew that there was something special when we talked about the Lord and when we sang songs to the Lord. And I loved music and I loved worship. And you may not have understood exactly what I was singing um, or even experiencing, but I knew God was real. Yeah. I knew that as a young kid. And so I was six years old when I got saved. And it's so funny because we think of, a six-year-old, you know, when they come to a place of repentance, there's not much to repent, you know, but we're a few days and full of trouble, right? Yeah. And so when I hear of other people who got saved when they were four or five, six years old, I thank God for that because there's such a foundation of truth in in kids' lives. And so I think even children's ministry is so important. Absolutely. Getting a foundation of truth and scripture and letting them start a relationship with God from the earliest age they can is so important. So I was six years old, got saved. I got filled with the Holy Ghost and I was in first grade and I'll never forget this. <laughs> so uh, it was Sunday 
and I got filled with the Holy Ghost. And then on Monday, it was show and tell. And so my show and tell for that Monday was the Holy Ghost. <laughs> and so I'm as proud as a peacock going up to the front, and I'm like, my show and tell is the Holy Ghost. And so my teacher was like, oh, oh, well, <laughs> they explain about that. And I'm like, well, it's Jesus living yeah, in my heart. Yeah, That's what it yeah. is. <laughs> so I, I just ha I think it's so precious that the Lord gave that as such a vivid memory to me because I was so happy. And I remember the joy of the Lord and feeling like I was a new person, yeah, even sure. at six years old. And so uh, I got baptized. And what I love about my story, though, is I look back on that and I go, I wonder, you know, if if my testimony is as rich as someone who truly got saved from the world. And I believe it is because Absolutely. foundationally, when I hit the rough patches and when any of us hit the rough patches, what is the basis of our salvation is a relationship with Absolutely. Jesus. So when those hard times came and they did, yeah. I could look back and go, I know a God that saved me when I was six years old. And I, yes, I may look like I have it all together, but when God knows in my secret place that I don't, yeah, sure. and that I'm hurting, and yeah. that there's all of these things coming at me, that he is truly the reason I'm alive. And so I'm getting fired up. Sorry. No, yeah. <laughs> I, I, I look back at those moments and I think, thank God you saved me. Yes. Because the next stumbling block, I know I'm going to have Jesus and the next one and yeah. the next one because he gives us life more abundantly. And it is with unspeakable joy, right, that we yeah. live our lives. So my testimony, I would say at the base of it is it's full of yeses to the Lord. And because I gave him my yes, he's given me life more abundant than I could possibly have ever imagined. And even through the dark times and the hard times and the times that I didn't understand why awful, awful things were happening to me and when I was responding in a way that I shouldn't have, sure. that God still had me and loved me. And so I, I just love the fact that I grew up in a ministry family. I love the fact that the songs that I sang that were about the blood of Jesus that you don't really get when you're four and five yeah, years sure. old. Yeah, sure, yeah. But now I look at those songs and I go, thank God for the blood. That's literally where Thank You, Jesus, for the Blood comes from. Well, that's a powerful song, Thank Jared. you. We, when I look back over my life and I think of those songs yeah. too and think things all over, I can truly say that he's blessed yes. me and he's a good God. So the songs, it's so funny. Now I have songs that I can look back at on my life and go, this song that I either listened to or wrote had such an impact on my life because of the truth. And so when I sing Nothing But the Blood now, I think of my grandma and my grandpa singing it with all fervency of love and adoration yes. to the Lord. Yes. And I look back on that now and go, yeah, that makes sense now, and yeah. I get it. Thank you, Jesus. Yes. Thank you, God, for the blood. Um, and it also reminds me that no matter how much shame we might feel or guilt we might feel, God still has a place for us. Yes, he does. He's a God of nothing shamed and nothing yes. guilty, right? I, I don't know. I just, I'm so grateful for my life. I'm so grateful for where he's brought me from. Another huge part of my testimony is I lived my life very single for a very long time. Yeah. And um, thought I was going to live out one of those, it's me and Jesus <laughs> kind of lives. Sure. And I knew that if he sent me a husband, that it was going to be a miracle. I don't mean that to be funny. I truly mean like whoever my husband, if he was going to be my husband on this earth, like that would be a miracle. And I married my husband three years ago, and it truly has because now we are full force saying yes to the Lord, walking every day by wow. faith, seeking his kingdom first. And literally seeing God and trusting him wholeheartedly and seeing God do miracles every single day. So what would you say, Charity, just real quick? I think that that's something very important to there's a lot of ladies out there, a lot of young men out there that yes. they're yet to be married and they're trusting the Lord, looking to the Lord like you were. And I've always said in relationship, pursue the Lord. Yes. And whenever it's God's person, they'll be in front of that pursuit. Absolutely. You'll find them in that pursuit of the Lord. What would you say, Charity, to the young ladies, the, the, the men, young men out there that maybe they're still single yeah. and you know how the, the enemy runs things across your mind, <laughs> just compromise, you're, yeah. you're, you're, you've got too many standards or too many this and that, but God's put those things on the inside of you. But what would you say to them in relation to that? I think 
The thing I would say is don't grieve something you haven't lost yet. Huh. They're not in your life yet, but don't grieve the fact that they're not there. You haven't lost them yet. Yeah. There's something to look forward to. Sure. God has a plan for you. And the second thing I would say is godliness with contentment yeah. is great gain. When I turned 30, and I know that's a big number for ladies and gentlemen. Yeah, sure. Um, but when I turned 30, I asked the Lord, I said two things. I said, God, I'm not going to look at this as some sort of like, oh, no, I'm 30. Like, that's that doesn't make sense to me, first sure. of all. Well, when I woke up on my 30th birthday, I said, God, if you could just give me the gift of contentment. I just want to be that's content. That's powerful, Charity. I just want to be content. And... I did. I woke up on my 30th birthday, the most content I'd ever been in my life. Wow. And every year since then, I have literally written out a thank you to the Lord. Thank you for one more year of life. Thank you for one more year of being able to serve you. I don't grieve the things I don't have yet because I'm so fulfilled in what I'm doing in my life. I have my health. I have parents who love me. I have a cute little puppy. Like There's <laughs> things that we look at, and I really, truly believe if we counted our blessings and truly sure. did it that we wouldn't grieve the things that we've lost or see we're not supposed to compare amongst ourselves either. yeah sure and i know right now with social media it is the biggest comparison yeah, generation absolutely. we have ever seen yeah so i looked at that and when my husband finally came around i was like wow you were literally worth 30 years of waiting and i'd wait another 30 years wow if you can get with the lord and be content because it he does. He fulfills your heart in other ways. Yeah, and sure he does. The other thing I would say just on a practical side is there's so much you can do when you're single. Yeah, sure. That you can't do once you're married. Sure. And that doesn't mean it's a hindrance. It just means you have the freedom to pick up and go where God calls you yeah, to go sure. in that moment. Yeah, sure. Um, and so I think, you know, live your life to the fullest. Become the best version of yourself. Get debt free. Yeah. The, my husband and I both got into our marriage completely debt free and it saved our lives. Wow. That's a miracle in this generation for sure. Absolutely. And so I would say there's a lot of things you can do to better yourself, not just for yourself, but for the kingdom of sure. God and for your future spouse. I mean, those are things to attain and to try to, you know, see what you can do to make yourself the best that you can be for the Lord. Well, I think, Charity, when you look, I think you hit on something that's very important. And this, I think, plays across the, the Christian life is when you're content, when you come to the place where you are not, not just faking contentment, yeah. <laughs> but that you really are content, that, yes. Lord, I'm satisfied in you. Exactly. It always seems, at least in my life, over the course of the ministry and since I've been saved, is when I've come to that place with the Lord, that, Lord, I'm willing to be in this spot and be content with you in this spot for the rest of my life. It, I'm okay right. with that. That's right. And it always seems, at least in my life, that when I come to that place, it's not long after that things shift and change. When you really come, that the Lord, because everything God does in a life is all about spiritual growth. Yes. It's all, you know, we've made it a lot of things, spiritual growth and enlargement. We've made it, you know, external blessings or whatnot. But God's always after that new creation. He's always after developing that new creation. And when you come to the place where you're content in whatever that God, I, whether I'm singing to 10 mm. or singing to a million, yeah. I just love you, Lord. And it seems that it's that spirit that God oftentimes promotes and brings things into your life. Yeah. Well, and speaking of that, I, I love David in the scriptures. Sure. But we always look at him as the guy who killed the giant. And the guy who became king and overcame Saul and overcame all these things in his life. And the Lord has just been recently showing me the contentment that David had. Sure. I think about that day that the prophet came and said, I want to see all of your sons. And Jesse was like, well, there's still one still out on the hill. And yeah, I go, sure. David was out on the hill completely content to yeah. just watch the sheep and sing songs and praise the Lord. Isn't that what wonderful? if he had never been called to be king? And we see literally scriptures full of praises unto God, even after Isn't he was that something. King, even after he was called to something, he was still content just to be in the field, and I think that's what grew him. Yeah, absolutely. And, you know, he had to face those things in the field in order to be able to face his giant later. But more importantly than that, he spent time with God. Yeah, he spent time with yeah. God. Yeah, I mean that's that's the basis of his contentment. Sure. And so I was thinking of that the other day. I'm like, God, if you had not called me to what you've asked me to do, 
I want that kind of contentment. Sure. I want the kind of contentment that says it's me and Jesus, and if I have to do it alone, I'm still going to do it. Wow. You know, I preached on Wednesday night. I've been in this Eyes That See series, Charity. I know we're getting off on a lot of different things, but just being led of the Lord and the conversation. But I preached a message Wednesday night called Looking Upon the Welfare of Your Brethren. Mm -hmm. And uh, the whole message, the emphasis was it is you brought out David and I brought out Joseph. How both of these men had great callings upon their life. But really, they were content just serving their brethren. Yeah. If you remember, Joseph's father said, I want you to go check on your brethren. And Joseph knew that his brethren didn't really, they wasn't very positive about his life. Mm-hmm. But he was willing just to go check on them. And you see him get thrown in the pit. Then you see him get thrown in uh, to the prison. And in the prison, something that really moved me, Charity, is that in the prison, the Bible says that Joseph recognized that the the two gentlemen that was thrown in there by Pharaoh, that they had a change in their emotions. And he said, why are you so sad? But he was so content that he wasn't looking for a promotion, but he's just looking to be minister for the Lord where he was. And when you get to that place where you just, even you bring up Goliath. I mean, David was there to give some loaves and ephah, I think, to his brethren. Mm -hmm. He wasn't there to fight. But I can tell you when you're trying to serve and you're content with what the Father sends you to do, right. you find in those moments promotion comes that are quite phenomenal because yeah. opportunities are there. Absolutely. But I think charity, uh, the contentment is fantastic. I think that's where you need to be at. What would you say in relation to ministry? I know we talked a little bit about uh, ministry and how that developed for you. Would you mind sharing just a little bit to how you are where you're at today? <laughs> well, it's a lifetime story. <laughs> But I'll sum it up by saying um, my mom was a choir director and she took me to choir practice with her every Thursday. So I fell in love with harmonies and the sound of multiple voices singing unto the Lord. And so from the very beginning, I was in love with choirs and, and church music. And so I think God truly gave me the desire of my heart because I, I was able to understand music at such a young age. Um, practicality my parents you know gave me piano lessons and singing lessons and things but I got to a place when I was about 14 that I had to make a really really life changing decision Mm -hmm. and uh, made the decision um, started working at the church I led music for the youth group Um, didn't know what I was doing but it's so funny because when you're young you think you know what you're doing yeah sure like I'm ready for this I got this (laughs) but singing music and being led of the Lord are two separate things. Yeah, sure. So God is kind and allowed me to have a loving church family that would let me get up and essentially guide me to the <laughs> place I needed to be. And there's a lot of really bad written songs that will never <laughs> see the light of day. And there's a lot of uh, church services where I'm singing that no one will ever hear, thank God. But it's that place of, you know, I'm developing your gifting sure. for your calling because your calling uh-huh. and your gifting are not the same. Uh-huh. Thing. That's good. Your gifting is made as a tool for your calling. And so 14 started writing songs along with some really brooding poetry. <laughs> Just <laughs> have, have, have those <laughs> become teenage, public charity? No, Do we never. get to read those? Or? <laughs> <laughs> those are going to be in, uh, you know, piled away mode <laughs> for a long time. But so I ended up going to college for music. Um, you know, walking out relationships, I think, are really how God shows us how to truly have a, a real relationship with Him, also. Um, because people are faulty and are frail and sure. can hurt us, but He's never going to leave That's us or right. forsake us. But He shows us, you know, even though we may may hurt Him, He's never going to leave us. Yeah. And so I think it's it's interesting to look at your calling when you're growing. God's growing you, but sometimes he's got to press you. Yeah, sure he does. Because where does the anointing come from yeah. if it's not from the pressing? Yeah. So I think once I got out of college, I realized, wow, I I really love to sing, but you really don't make money at singing. Yeah, sure. So I started teaching high school English and did that for seven years. And I love to teach and just thought I was going to do that and lead worship at the church that my dad preaches at and pastors um, for the rest of my life. Sure. Well, that did not happen. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and uh, curveballs can sometimes hurt, but in the long run, if if God has your full attention, 
and you stay with it and you don't waver on your faith, he's going to bring yeah. you out. So I think now in a place where, you know, I'm, I'm writing songs and they're not just, you know, in a pile on the floor somewhere in my house. Like churches are singing the songs that are being written. That's incredible. Praise God for that. Yeah. Um, the songs that I get to sing, I, I have people literally coming up and going, this has changed my life. This has saved my life. Wow, God has okay. used this music to work in my life in a place when I needed it. And that's been our prayer all along. Like whatever we're gifted at, let it bless somebody and let it ultimately bless and minister yes. to the Lord. Yes. To the Lord. Um, because he inhabits the praises of yes, his people. Yes, he does. And I'm also in this place now where I go, if your gifting is in something that doesn't spotlight, if, if you know what uh -huh. I mean, like it's not the worship leader position. Maybe you're awesome at cooking. Yeah. Or maybe you're awesome at organizational skills. Uh -huh. And if you are, bless you, <laughs> because that is not my that is not my forefront. But I think of all of these giftings that people have, and I'm like, how much stronger would the kingdom of God be if we all poured into each other's giftings wow. and let them be used for the kingdom? Absolutely. Like, oh, I can't, I can't be used because I'm not good at singing. I'm sorry. That's not how this works. Yeah, absolutely. The, chur the church is made up of a body of yes, people it is. with hands and feet and eyes yeah, and ears yeah. that all do different things absolutely. and all come together for one great calling, and that is to seek first the kingdom of God yes. and all these things will be added and to add disciples to the church. Yes. So again, sorry, getting fired up. I just, I feel like where I'm at now, if it wasn't for his grace, I wouldn't be here. Uh -huh. But if it also wasn't for the people around me going, it's okay that you're messed up. Yeah, sure. It's okay that this happened. God still has a plan for your sure. life. So ultimately, if we are, it just is so simple. If yeah. we're Christ-like and loving and support one another, the kingdom's going to grow. Yeah. And if we pray, yeah. and if we seek Come on, his Jerry. face, yeah. and we fast, I mean, there's there's nothing our God cannot do, yeah. and we can do all things through Christ. Yes. So that's the answer. Yeah. That's it. Well, I think, you know, Charity, I, you hit on something. We actually, our last podcast was, What is True Ministry? Wow. And you, you hit on just for those few words you said, really what we took 30 minutes to say, yeah. is basically ministry for a long time had become very platform centered right uh, people looked at the platform and they do ministry and we're just all second rate people in the body of christ but mm. that's just not the way that the lord uh, designed this to be no every member must fully function and i i look at you charity and i look how god's using you but it seems like through your music and your songs it's really pulling in the largeness of the body it's not just singular your people right. worship with you they don't right. watch charity gale worship they worship the Lord with you. And I think that that's a fantastic thing. And I think that that is, uh, I believe we're on the brink of the coming of the Lord. Yeah. The Lord could come back at any moment. We all always look toward, you know, the clouds. But yeah. uh, in that, I believe that he is getting his body back to what he desired it to be from the beginning. And uh, I see people that, like you say, whatever gifting you have, whatever part of the body you, you have, that we're starting to see a generation of the church celebrating every member of the body. Mm -hmm. And I understand what the, the place that I am as the, in the member of the body. It is vital that every part, because we all impact one another. And when we become very self-centered in ministry, you'll find eventually it'll really get you because yeah. the, whole, the, the whole body suffers. And with you saying, and I, I see how you worship a lot of the times of your uh, videos you release mm -hmm. it's just a lot of people worshiping the lord right. and that's beautiful because i think that was lost for a long time yeah well i think it became a a one person show for a long sure. time and like i said I, I love choirs because it's a representation of the body of christ all sure. singing unto the lord now we all make a joyful noise don't get me wrong <laughs> but i i love I love when choirs get together and sing because I, I can look at choirs and go, look at the different lives that oh, God yeah, has sure. touched. And not one person is like another. Sure. We're united in Christ. Yes. And for the love of his people. Yeah. And so that that's always been something I've gravitated to is just, is, is the body worshiping the Lord together? Because the Bible says it's going to be every tribe yes. and every tongue and every knee yeah. will bow and yeah. every tongue will confess that he is Lord. And, you know, Jesus has been so kind to us. We 
we need to look at his kindness in the scriptures. But also, when I look, look in the book of Acts where it says that, you know, they went from house to house, yeah. breaking in bread, which means fellowshipping, yeah. and in prayers. Yeah. We got to pray. Got to pray. We have to pray together. That's what makes it all, uh, sets the stage. That makes all the difference, doesn't it? Right. Well, Charity, we could go on for a long time. Yeah. I really feel the <laughs> Lord just visiting with you. And this podcast, that's really what we, we set out to do, just a fellowship of the people that God brings into our lives of of just talking about Jesus yeah. and talking about the goodness of the Lord. Now, I know that you have a brand new CD come out, and That's it right. is powerful, <laughs> powerful right. CD. Every song's annoying. You know, sometimes you get CDs and you get a few of them. That's a, but charity, every one of them is powerful. Praise the God. Lord's in all of them. What would you like to say maybe about that? Well, I, I'm grateful that the Lord's using this album. It is it has been, uh, this is, I think the question I get is how long have you been working on it? And the answer is two years in a lifetime. Wow. Because you have songs that need to be written, but then you also look back and you go, wow, there's a piece of my life that if I didn't live, it, this song wouldn't exist. Uh -huh. And so endless praise, like I'm just, I'm just at a place where all I want to do is get before the throne of God wow. and worship him and just pour my praises out on him so the whole album is complete worship album wow. but the the thing that i love about it too is is i feel like it does draw parts of the entire body of christ because uh -huh. we do have our preferences yeah sure we have our musical preferences and even our lyrical preferences but the other thing that the lord is teaching me is that it's not about your preference it's about your heart posture uh -huh. of worship. Wow. Charity. So if That's I powerful. can lay down things that I may not prefer musically, I can add that to my album and go, I know that this is going to draw the grandmas and grandpas. Yeah, sure. And I know that this is going to draw maybe this ethnic community or this sure. ethnic community. And I know that this, you know, if I bring in just a couple of, of, of older, beautiful hymns and yeah, songs sure. that we used to sing, we need to rally up the family yeah, of God. Yeah, absolutely. How do you do that? How are we going to worship together if we don't lay down our preferences? Yeah, sure. We have to do that. You have to do it. So this album is just a heart song unto the Lord with the people of God in mind. Yeah. And so I, every day, I, I thank God for it every day because it's, it's probably of all the things that I've ever put out, this, this blesses me. Like when I look at these songs, I go, wow, thank you, God, for your kindness. Thank yeah. you for your blood. Thank you for. And so I know it may be weird for an artist to say that, but like I, I truly am blessed by this album and I'm blessed by the people who come to me and say it's changed my life. Huh. It's, it's just, you know, worked a miracle in my life or I found Jesus again or, you know, just I thank God for it every day. I love it. You know, I heard someone say one time, uh, charity and ministry, and I've always tried to take it to heart. They said, if it doesn't move you. It's not going to move anybody else. Amen. So if you're sitting here and you're saying it blesses me, it stirs my spirit yeah. because I see it ministering to everybody. You know, Paul said, I become all things to all men that I might exactly. save some. Mm -hmm. And he's not saying that I become sinful or whatnot, but he's saying his preferential things. You know, I relate to everybody. I want everybody to be drawn into this. I don't want, like you say, one particular type of people. Or one particular type of age yeah. is one thing I found about the Lord is the more we become more like him, the more we look around our circle, we find people that naturally yes. are very different than we are. Right. I mean, some people like sports. Some people don't like sports at all. Some people like, you know, whatever, but just different things of backgrounds or whatever. But the centrality of it all mm -hmm. is Jesus Christ. So thank you so much for joining us today, Charity. Thank you for and, having uh, me. I it excites it. me. I believe this is a, a friendship that will go beyond today. But uh, thank you so much. Going to continue to listen to your CD mm -hmm. and uh, tell everybody that I know Charity Gill's the real deal. Praise God. Thank you so thank much you. for joining us. God bless you.